Good morning. I am presenting before you a case of a child Darana? who presented to us with acute coronary syndrome. My name is Dr. Govind and I am from Sri Jayadeva Institute of Cardiovascular Sciences and Research, Bangalore. So this is a 14-year-old boy who came to us with complaints of chest pain on and off since three months, dyspnea on exertion, NYHA grade three since one month, easy fatigability since one month, there's no history of premature deaths in the family. Uh, the child was born out of a second degree consanguineous marriage. On general physical examination, he, uh, he had a tendinous xanthoma on the lateral aspect of the foot, along the tendon of Achilles, and also on the uh, patellar region. On close examination, uh, he did not have arpus. Uh, on further probing, uh, the grandfather also had similar, similar skin lesions. ECG at presentation, it's a 12 lead standard, uh, 12 lead ECG with normal standardization showing down sloping ST depressions in eight leads, seven to eight leads with ST elevations in lead AVR suggestive of LMCA pattern. Uh, his lab investigation showed elevated drop T levels, which was strongly positive, elevated total cholesterol, LDL was elevated, triglycerides were within normal limits, lipoprotein A was elevated and apo b100 was elevated his echo uh, showed structurally normal cardia as we are suspecting familial hypercholesterolemia we looked uh, specifically for supravalvular aortic stenosis uh, but there was no supravalvular aortic stenosis but there was a thickened aortic wall and mild ar there was no, there were no regional wall motion abnormalities so this child presented to us in acute coronary syndrome with n stemi in lmca pattern He's a case of homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia type 2a because of the lab investigations that the total cholesterol was more than 600 and uh, with only elevation of LD and uh, triglycerides being normal, he's classified into type 2a FH. So we started him on uh, ACS protocol with IV heparin and high dose statins and ezetimibe. The plan was to do uh, immediate coronary angiogram and uh, planned revascularization. This is an aortic root angiogram in LAO cranial view with 5F pigtail catheter showing luminal irregularities of the ascending aorta with mild AR and critical 95% stenosis of osteoproximal RCA with normal distal RCA. The second angiogram is a non selective left coronary angiogram done in RAO caudal view with 5F JL catheter showing tight stenosis of proximal and distal left main. The third angiogram is a non-selective left coronary angiogram done in RAO cranial view showing long segment 80 to 90% stenosis of osteoproximal to distal left main with mild diffuse disease of mid to distal LAD and 30 to 40% stenosis of proximal LCX. The fourth angiogram is a non-selective left coronary angiogram in LAO caudal view showing significant stenosis of osteoproximal left main with normal distal LCX and OM. We also did Rima and Lima shoots, which showed uh, mild osteoproximal stenosis. So this child had LMCA and RCA disease. We had two options. One is to do a PTC and put a stent in the LMCA and RCA. And the other was to do a CABG. With the inherent condition and the increased risk of re-stenosis, we went ahead with CABG and uh, optimal medical therapy. Uh, intraoperative findings were the aorta was diffusely diseased along with involvement of the LAD, RCA, and Lima and Rima as well. Because of the involvement of the Lima and Rima, the child received saphenous vein grafts. Uh, two grafts he received. One is at the LMCA bifurcation and the second one at the RCA. For CABG ECG, uh, we can see that there is a resolution of the STT changes in the post CABG ECG. Apart from this, the additional lipid lowering strategies that we used were ideally we should have gone for a lipid aphoresis, but uh, because of the non availability of lipid aphoresis in our uh, setting. We went uh, after discussion with the blood bank. Uh, we went for three settings of whole blood uh, exchange and uh, uh, PRBCs were transfused to the child. It is like a partial exchange transfusion. Child was uh, also given injection evolocumab PCSK9 inhibitor. Hmm? This is the follow up of the child. Uh, at admission, his total cholesterol was 662, and at discharge, his 
cholesterol was 420 uh, the child was non compliant to medications after one month when we followed him up after one month uh, we did get to know that uh, he had not taken his medications for the past one month so his total cholesterol was uh, 380 we use this to, uh, simon broom criteria for diagnosis of F fh and this child fits into definite fh uh, with respect to uh, giving evolucumab uh, in homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia uh, we did a literature search and uh, uh, we had two references one is tesla b part b which showed that evolucumab uh, significantly reduced uh, ldl at 12 weeks by 30.9 percent and toxic study, uh, which showed there was additional reduction of LDL cholesterol by 8.3% in homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. So uh, chest pain is rarely anginal in children. And when it is, we have to suspect familial hypercholesterolemia, which can present with premature atherosclerosis and premature CAD. Uh, severe LMCA triple vessel disease might need CAVG or PCI in childhood. Plasma pheresis and newer treatment options like PCSK9 inhibitors have been effective in LDL reduction even in childhood. Good morning. Uh, 